Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the Social Work Race podcast. It is January the 2nd, yes, so I'm off again. Um, So obviously, for the last two weeks, there hasn't been much in terms of going in, but actually, I've been on duty for two weeks-ish. Obviously, there's been um, some bank holidays extended, so I've been off and if you can hear it in my voice we are still struggling with this cold it's not normal for me i've never really been one to catch colds but i've got what everyone else has got but also remember is that i have been doing visits with some people who have been coughing and i mentioned in my last podcast that some of my visits um i've i've been you know the family have said to me uh are you sure we are all sick and i'm like yeah i have to come around and do that visit. Fine, Curtis, come around and they'd be coughing. And here I am. So I've caught so many different things from people. But, you know, I blame myself. I need to look after myself more. And sometimes in this job, it's just social work. Oh, in fact, just as a side note, look, you need to look after yourselves. How you do that, I don't know. Depends on the team you work in. Depends where you work. Depends on how many social workers are in your team. Look, people do like to say self-care is important. And it is important. But... sometimes it can be an impossible task. How on earth do I look after myself when I have this much work? That's one of the big challenges. But here it is. You've got to find a way. And for those of us who are parents, it's like saying, look, uh, you need to go on holiday every month. You you look at yourself and you think, you know, that's going to be impossible. And that's what it can feel like. And that's the reality of social work sometimes. You're thinking, how do we look after ourselves? But we just have to. Because the truth is, and any social worker will tell you, you will not last long in this job if you don't find a way. So that's me right now, okay? Um, I'm glad for the break. I needed it. Um, Without the Christmas break, I tell you, I would have gotten sick anyway. But here we go. Um, Today, I wanted to talk to you and share an article with you, and it's going to be entitled The Worst Parenting Style. Um, And that worst parenting style is known as uninvolved parenting. Why are we talking about this? Why this is going to be brilliant for you to understand who you are working with or for. I use the terms interchangeably. You're working with people. You're working for the public. You know, you're working with the public, the people in need, your service users. We do both in it. I guess we work for and with them. And... A lot of the time, I mean, I work in children and families. I am, unfortunately, I don't get to give much on mental health and adult work because it's just not my field. But um, I, I guess in some ways you might, as an adult, come across this if they are parents. But more so, children and families, there are a lot of parents who, who are frustrated with their children's behaviour or the outcomes and if you do some analysis, this will help you. You can use this in your, um, uh, just type in uninvolved parenting if it's relevant to your case. It's relevant to a lot of mine. And that has been the case over time. Parents who do love their children, but have no recognition of their parenting style. They haven't engaged with that um, that knowledge or, or, or they have a lack of knowledge of their parenting style. So this is why I'm encouraging you to check this out. I'm going to read some of it to you. It's really interesting because it's relevant if you're working in children and families, how uninvolved parenting impacts a child and how there is going to need to be work with the parent if they choose to engage on their parenting style and hopefully they can turn it around. We'll see. Um, Uninvolved parents. These are neglectful parents and they are uninvolved in their children's lives. They do not meet their child's needs, whether it's basic or emotional needs. They do not set boundaries or discipline their children. The children of uninvolved parents receive little nurturing or guidance from their parents. They are practically left to raise themselves. These kinds fear the worst among the four Baumrind parenting styles, B-A-U-M-R-I-N-D, Baumrind parenting styles. 
the four Bormerind parenting styles. Uh, in the 1960s, Diana Bormerind, a developmental psychologist at the University of California at Berkeley, identified three different types of parenting styles. Authoritative, authoritarian, and permissive parenting. In 1983, Maccabee and Martin added a fourth type to the framework, which is uninvolved or neglectful parenting style. These four parenting styles are categorized based on two dimensions, responsiveness and demandingness. Uninvolved parents are neither responsive nor demanding. Uninvolved parenting is different parenting. Sorry, it's indifferent parenting. If permissive parents are at one end of the responsive spectrum, then neglectful parents occupy the other end. In terms of demands, authoritarian parents who have a high expectations for their children to meet are at the opposite are the opposite to uninvolved parents. Here are some neglectful parenting examples. They show no warmth for affection towards their children, act in an, in an indifferent or distant way. They try not to help or take care of their children's basic needs. They do not provide emotional support such as belonging and encouragement. They don't set rules, boundaries or expectations on their children's behavior. Also, they do not monitor or supervise them. They don't show interest in their children's schoolwork or activities or performance. They do not involve themselves in their children's lives overall. And it gets deep now. Intergenerational transmission of neglect parenting style. Research shows that neglected children will grow up 2.6 times more likely to become neglectful to their own children and twice as likely to be physically abusive. What's the causes of uninvolved parenting? Neglectful parents often come from dysfunctional families and received neglectful or uninvolved parenting themselves when they were growing up. Uninvolved parents tend to have mental health issues of their own, such as depression and alcoholism. Another common cause is the history of substance abuse, problems in the family. Researchers have found that many addicted parents have been raised by addicted parents themselves, up to 83%, and neglected during their childhood, which is around 55%. Addicted parents who have antisocial personality characteristics and choose mates who are predisposed to substance abuse or other mental health problems are at an even higher risk of becoming neglectful and this has been a lot of my caseload um, this is the case where a lot of parents they haven't got that insight into their decision making when it comes to their choice of partner they tend to in, in my opinion choose someone who is a reflection of who they've seen but they're not really that conducive with being a parent um, they can be in a sense a reflection of how they f their, their choice of partner can be a reflection of how they see themselves um, but there's a lot to be revealed there and this is work that you can do with the parent you can talk about this to see their level of insight some parents will just look it's not about me it's about my child he needs the help she needs the help and they don't want to address anything themselves so that is one of the realities um, the harmful effects of uninvolved parenting style. Uninvolved parenting is the worst style of parenting among the four types because children raised with this parenting style tend to fear the worst. Neglectful parenting can affect a child's well-being and outcomes in their development severely. It can have the following adverse effects in a young child. Check this out. Because if you work in children and families and you're working with a child that, say, doesn't go to school or, you know, they, they're creating real problems at home, 
look at some of the, the impacts that they've noted in their studies. The child is more impulsive and has lef- less self-control. They underachieve at school. They have poor emotional regulation skills. They lack social skills, low self-esteem, increased chance of mood disorders, such as depression. They tend to develop borderline personality disorder. They suffer a high risk of substance abuse and neglected children of substance abused parents are four to 10 times more likely to develop substance misuse behaviors. Uninvolved parenting is not the same as free range parenting. Free range parenting is a term created in recent years to describe parents who give their children the freedom to go to places such as the playground without adult supervision. It's not the same. Free range parenting is not the same as uninvolved parenting. Free range, free range only describes one aspect of parenting, which is it does the does which is calls into the question of does the parent supervise their child, yes or no, uh, appropriately. It doesn't say anything about whether the parent is warm and responsive to the child's needs. Busy parents are not necessarily uninvolved parents. Um, Some parents who hold highly demanding jobs inevitably have less time for their kids, but they still are warm and caring. It's, It's powerful to know that there's a difference between you know, there, there, there's the levels of neglect, some of it unintentional, but that doesn't have the same impact. I think we're seeing a, a key theme here, which is, is the parent attending to the genuine, um, are they re- responding to their child's experiences? And are they reaching out to the child? Are they proactive with the child? These are some of the themes that I'm seeing. When it comes to building a healthy parent child relationship quality is more important than quantity neglectful parenting is harmful so it is a harmful parenting style uninvolved parents are uncaring parents who have no interest in a child's welfare and this is the thing when you do the exploration work with the child or the family you will find that parents when they see how their child is behaving they feel that they are caring parents because they're crying out and saying, look, they're off the rails or their behavior is such and such and it makes them uncomfortable. However, that's a show because of how bad things are. That doesn't mean that they're involved or they care. In this situation, not being able to get involved in a child's life is not the same as not wanting to get involved in a child's life. Psychologists and experts agree that kids with an uninvolved or neglectful parent generally have the most negative outcomes. A neglectful mother is not simply a parent who gives a child more freedom or less face time. Negligent parents neglect their other parents uh, their duties as parents as well and that's the article for you to use as a reference in your assessment if you find that there is a parent who just doesn't get it who doesn't recognize and a lot of the time if you dig deeper with a child um, because you're always going to get a different story from each um a family member the mum would always be saying something different from the child you, you can guarantee that, um, that that is going to be the majority of cases because a child has their experience and I think that when you ask questions tell me how your mum has been tell me how your dad has been Whether, even if they come from a well off family and I've seen it myself sometimes well off families the parents are just dis they think that they've done the job because they're in a nice house, we give them everything they want, but the parents haven't necessarily had the skills. I mean, the amount of parents I've spoken to who say, my mum didn't care about me, my dad wasn't around. You know, that's real, that's a common thing I'm getting. Um, 
So my advice is to understand it. It's just to ask questions and see how far the parent's willing to go to do the work, to understand their past. Do you know what I mean? Use genograms as well to, to visualise for the parent that they may well be replicating a behaviour stream that has gone before. And then the questions of, well, what are you prepared to do? Now, honestly, when it comes to teenagers, we don't even know if we can turn it around. Do you know what I mean? We hope that they will, if the parent changes their behaviour, that they could, you know, induce a different relationship. We don't know that they can do that. Um, so if you want to understand more about um, if a parent has a past that they're replicating or if a child has a different experience, you just need to ask questions. And I guess, which is not a part of this show, this episode, sorry, um, we haven't asked how you do that. I guess that's for a different show. But if you're brave enough, go for it. That's the end of this episode. I hope it's useful. Uh, take care of yourselves as you go. And I know it's January the 2nd. Listen, what are you going to do different as a social worker, I guess, is the question. Or what are you going to continue to do? Let's see. Take care of yourselves again.